Welcome to another episode of Women's Wellness That Works. I'm Essential Ann, and my purpose is to inspire, empower, and guide women in their self-awareness so that they can be responsible for their health, happiness, and well-being. I have the pleasure today to have Stephanie Banka, who, oh my God, you and I have a mutual friend that we connected, and so I'm so grateful for her. Her name is Katrina. Um, but here's the thing you are just a whole bunch of awesomeness here Aww. not only your beauty your hair your jewelry but everything about you your energy and you are definitely a creative so tell our viewers a little bit about your background and where you come from well i always like to say that i come from god because it's a much shorter story than all the places i've lived mm -hmm. uh, i'm a very project-based person so i like to focus on the project that i'm doing at the time because technically it would be so much easier to provide you with a short list of all the things I have not done. Mm -hmm. So I think we can start with, um, I mean, I've done a lot of things. Mostly I think one of my highlights is that I had the opportunity to work in women's community mm -hmm. in the late 90s when I uh, co another woman and I co-founded a day center for prostituted and homeless women and wow. their children. And so I worked there as a counselor uh, for quite a few years. And I feel that that work in and of itself um, launched me into where I am now. And that without it, I wouldn't really have embraced or understood my own womanhood mm -hmm. uh, as, as precisely. So that's interesting. So what made you decide to go into that line of work? You know, it's funny because I didn't know that's what I was going to do. I actually had to write a thesis and um, I ended up, I had, I had been in a psychology class that was a community psychology class where we had to do volunteering. And all of, of course, the standard volunteer options were gone. And we couldn't really, I couldn't really find one, but I dug way deep in the resource drawers and I found out about this place called the Council for Prostitution Alternatives. And something about that sounded very interesting. Mm -hmm. So I went to them and said, I want to volunteer. Mm -hmm. And they closed the door in my face and said, you're not ready. Like, do the work. And I'm like, do the work? Mm -hmm. I'm not ready. What do you mean? And I'm like, I'm giving you my time for free. I don't even have the time to give. And so five times this happened. These people shut me out before they finally opened the door and said, okay, come in and talk to us about what you want to do. So I volunteered there. And, and so what did you learn from that experience? Um, I learned that sometimes volunteering isn't all fun and games <laughs> and that just because you want to give something to somebody doesn't mean they want to receive it. Mm -hmm. So it took me a little while to get clear on really what they were talking about, but there's a lot of languaging and a lot of concepts and a lot of inclusion work they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I think they were very exclusive about who they brought in. They brought in. Yes. Right. And so through that work, I ended up doing my thesis there actually and, and looking at self-esteem and self-concept mm -hmm. in prostituted women mm -hmm. uh, versus a control sample of uh, similarly demographic um, or aged, I should say, college students and uh, who didn't identify as having any affiliation with the sex industry whatsoever. And I anticipated finding a stark difference, and I did. Uh, and obviously, as we would suspect, uh, women who were experiencing that life and had fallen into homelessness, um, maybe as a result or vice versa, you know, were homeless and also prostituting to survive, um, were having lower self-esteem and lower self-concept. Yeah. So that kind of launched a lot of work around self-love. Right. And um, I went on, I was then asked by another woman to start a new place mm -hmm. uh, that would be um, maybe more, a little bit more inclusive for folks who, who didn't also identify with, with having been prostituted or mm -hmm. being a part of that. And what's interesting is you go back to self-love. And as women, again, self-love is really the basis of all of us to heal and be healed. Yeah. And so definitely that work that you you did, the volunteer work that you did with prostitution, the whole focus on your thesis was really self-esteem, self-love. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so, and it's funny because when I went to college, they had us write a letter about what we wanted to do and they gave it back to us in, at our graduation. And the letter said like everything I did. My mom found the letter, I think like 10 years ago and sent it to me while I was living in Jamaica, maybe 12 years ago. And everything that was on the letter, letter was what I was practicing now. So it was stuff about women's community. It was about making jewelry that changed, that was life changing. It was about uh, supporting folks in change. And so it turned out that I'm not even totally sure I had to go to college to be doing what I was doing, but ultimately yes. I did, right? It's like we're saying, you're on the path. And so tell me about living in Jamaica. Oh, amazing. Um, hope hope to go back soon. Amazing experience, um, incredible people, extremely vibrant. Mm -hmm. uh, and why did you people. live in Jamaica? I lived in Jamaica because my husband is Jamaican, yes. um, although we weren't married when I moved there. 
And so we raised our children there until my son was almost seven, I believe, six, seven, and then came back to the States to mm -hmm. further their education here. So, and it was amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. And so tell me about what you're passionate about, because I know there's so many things so you're many passionate things. about, but yes. I really love this piece that Thank says you. love. Yes. I love this piece because it says love on it. So tell me about this. So this is part of a collection that I created, um, actually started the creation of a couple of years ago and hasn't officially launched yet, though a couple of, of clients of mine are walking around in these pieces, literally a couple, I mean two, uh, mm -hmm. three. Three clients. Well, she's not a client. Two clients and a friend. <laughs> and uh, this is all about love. The collection mm. itself is called Roots, and it's. Oh, um, I love that name. Yeah. Roots. It's about mm. self love, and it's about. Also, getting getting ground being getting grounded. grounded. Yes. Absolutely. And so this piece itself has shungite and gold, and I'm mm. able to put a lot of different materials in there, mm. which is which is a great thing. I, I would say overarching theme though in terms of passion is transformation. Mm -hmm. And I use, I would say that I ride or use three vehicles uh, to achieve that for myself and or folks I work with. And adornment is one of them. I think the mm -hmm. power of adornment in, uh, in intention and in manifestation, yes. it, it plays a really great role in intention and manifestation. Also food is a big one. I'm a culinary mm -hmm. maven of all sorts. And so I think that for me, a vegan liberty and lifestyle has been a big part of transformation. Oh, say, say that word again. I like the word liberty. Vegan liberty. I don't use okay. the word diet. It vegan has the word liberty. diet. Yeah, diet has the word die in it. And mm -hmm. we tend in this culture to focus a lot on this word diet. And it's just die with a T at it, end, it, right. it which we learned was a very hard stop because it's a consonant. Right. So I'm not really into <laughs> the diet thing. So I've changed it to live it or liberty. Live because it's being life. unnourished with food, good food, healthy food allows you to live longer exactly. and healthier. For Oh my God, I love that word. So exactly. You learn so much from women. It's so true. Yes. So your jewelry is intentional. Very intentional. Very, very, very Infused much Infused with intention. Infused with intention. So tell me about that. What do, what do you do when you create a piece? What what comes that? What's the process of that? So there's a whole process. And I've curated that over decades of work mm -hmm. and uh, gotten better and better. Mm -hmm. And really what it's about is getting clear with my clients about what they're wanting to intend and ma manifest in their life. Sometimes that's about letting something go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's about bringing something in. And then what I'm able to do is I'm able to fuse. It's like a fusion of those intentions with different inclusions or ingredients. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to mix uh, different stones and for their powers, healing powers, yeah. etc., and or other botanicals, and or sometimes we actually take it as literally as having the individual uh, write down the intention, mm -hmm. and then we're including the actual intention in yeah. the piece. So I, like, I, I like what you said about intentions and inclusions, mm -hmm. right? What you would like to bring into versus l what we want to get rid of or what we yeah. want to let go, but what you want to include. So intention with inclusions, mm -hmm. that's definitely a great great uh, quote. Yes. 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 So, and I like to think of the little items that I'm putting in the pieces, whether it's like rose quartz or mm -hmm. amethyst or shungite, those themselves are also inclusions. Oh, so wonderful, it wonderful. kind of wraps it all up. And what I'm really excited about is that you and I are both going to be facilitators for the next Pure Abundance Retreat, which you will hear about soon and a little bit later. Yes. So yes. It's going to so, be awesome. I'll what? be facilitating. I do a journaling workshop every year. Mm -hmm. And I'll be facilitating a uh, journaling workshop about manifestation this year mm -hmm. and bringing manifestation and intentioning through visual journaling oh, specifically. Oh, so, that'd be interesting. I'm, I'm excited to learn more about that. Yes, it's, yeah. a, it's a great, it's a uh, really, really great practice. It's something that I've been doing in my life now for over a decade, mm -hmm. um, closer to two. And I have discovered such amazing results through this and experienced such amazing results and now have been able to extend that to working with other people in wonderful. groups and as individuals. So it's awesome. Oh, that's great. You yeah. are doing so many wonderful things. I mean, you are just multi-talented in so many levels. And again, you are beauty inside and out. So let me ask you some questions. What does it mean to be a woman? <laughs> So when I hear the word woman, I think phenomenal. Mm. <clears throat> I think woman well, manifester mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, co-creator. Yeah. So I think to be a woman means to have a deep connection with wisdom mm. when you're ready for it and to practice that. Mm. And I think it means to be, for me, it, it, it does, for me personally, my womanhood has to do with not just creating, but also nurturing. Who are your female inspirations? 
Well, I would say that our dear friend, Petrina Wisdom, is definitely one of them. I, I would say you have been an inspiration mm -hmm. in my life. Uh, Maya mm -hmm. Angelou is yes, certainly at the top of my list. Absolutely, Maya Angelou. I'm a huge Alice Walker fan as well. Um, and, and I'm sure there are many, many more. My mother is amazing, and she has been able to achieve so much in her life uh, despite so many obstacles mm -hmm. and challenges. And I think as of late, uh, the one who's quickly becoming a woman is my daughter. And I think oh. in some ways she may be my greatest inspiration mm -hmm. of all. Yes. Age is? Irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously something that I give reverence to. So I'm a Capricorn and I have the lovely experience of aging backwards. And so I've just put a pause at 33, which oh, is my spiritual absolutely. number. There you go. Yes. I love that. I'll be living at 33 forever. Thank you. Yay. And beauty is? from within and um, I think beauty for me is about living well and comfortably mm. in my own skin. Very good and definitely you share your beauty through your jewelry, through your presence and who you are. Thank you so much for being here thank on you. Women's Wellness That Work. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you and yes. I think you're amazing and I love what you're doing here and I'm really hoping that that something that I've contributed today would be helpful. Mm -hmm. And I also know that all the women that have been interviewed here today have so much coinciding, uh, just so many coinciding experiences that I think can bring, bring other folks the information they need, the resources they need, and the mm -hmm. support they need to, to grow and heal in the world. So thank you, Anne, for everything you're, you're doing. You're welcome. And, for and having me. I want to ask you one more question. So there's a young woman out there who's growing up, and they maybe are not feeling the self-love and self-esteem that some of the women who are in your life that you volunteered with in prostitution. What would you say to that woman right now? I'd say two things. I would say stop comparing yourself today. Stop comparing yourself to anybody else uh, is number one. I would say number two is find out what you're going to make. Find out what you're going to create because mm -hmm. creation and, and creativity for me has been a savior has been a companion, and I know that it will be for you too. We all do that in very different ways. I am, have formulated an amazing uh, and very, and very I think, simple practice that can support women in connecting with their creativity, mm -hmm. and so feel free to reach out to me if that helps. But honestly, stop comparing yourself to anybody else today and find out what you're gonna make. Thank you so Thank much you. for that. I think that is so helpful. Again, if this resonates with you, Right now, subscribe to this channel, Essential Anne, and share, share this video with everyone that you know. Remember, every woman has a story, her story. What's your story? Until the next time, until the next episode of Women's Wellness That Works, we will see you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you